A few days ago, the devs of Sentry reached out and offered me a key to try their game. Thank you. Sadly, the game is just not for me. But not wanting to be one of those people that just redeems a key without making content, I thought it'd be prudent to at least explain why and maybe help inform your buying choice for this game. It's not just going to be a list of bad points however, I think this game has a few good features too, at least hear me out. Saying that however, I literally got nowhere in this game and I didn't have any fun at all in the short time that I played this. So what is Sentry? It's from what I can gather a roguelike tower defence game. You chart your way through space akin to FTL, but when you come across a fight you switch to the ship's interior and set up traps and defences in first person, as well as use your own weapons to fight off waves of enemies from reaching deeper and deeper into your ship. If you run out of lives, you lose. If they make it all the way to the core of your ship, you lose. The latter however is not very common since you have so few lives. You will end up losing these before the worst happens. To start with, resources are scarce and you can only set up a few traps. Killing enemies will make them drop resources to let you build more, as well as arrow for your weapons. Each map will have several breach points that enemies can come from and it's your job to find the best and most efficient choke points to lay your traps. Big kudos to the devs here for making traps fully refundable so any misplacement can be rectified without penalty, as well as moving traps to deal with the shift in spawn points as each wave can shift to a different spawn point within the map. Between waves of enemies you have time to set up new traps and do any moving of traps, but the game dangles this carrot of extra resources if you start the wave early and you have a very short window in which to activate this. So much so I feel like I'm being punished or teased that I'm not diving into the next wave quick enough. Now this would be fine, a bit of a challenge if it were not for the fact that every enemy hits like a truck and considering you only have about 4 lives to start with, it just starts to build frustration and resentment towards the game. Far too quickly I think the game throws different enemy types at you too. You can quickly get overwhelmed since there are flying creatures that go over your traps, slugs and weird dog creatures that go under them, which leaves you holding the line with some of the most underpowered guns I've ever had the misfortune of wielding. Adding to the confusion is that this is a spaceship right? There are big armoured windows to survive the harshness of said space. Yet, my dinky little pistol can smash them in but a few hits, but the enemies take so many shots to kill. But if you do break these windows, to my great surprise and glee, it will suck all of the enemies near it out into space. At least until the emergency shutters come down to close off the hole. This is an amazing feature to find organically, and while I hate to spoil this for you, it is one of the few positives I had for this game. Once discovered, every window becomes a potential weapon you can use. And it's even funny sometimes when an enemy makes the breach themselves and causes their own demise. I just wish there were more of these environmental interactables, as at least as far as I've found, these windows are the only one. Going back quickly to the enemies being bullet sponges though, the game puts a heavy priority on hitting weak points like headshots, and this is fine to a certain extent, but it's one I think the game took too far here. Not only is the damage boost substantial, but it also feels like the game knows when you're aiming for said weak spots and starts the enemy moving in erratic patterns. And this can lead you to using just as many shots as trying to kill them normally. Add to this the very limited supply of ammo you can carry and the long cooldowns on traps and you will always have a few that slip through and you will eventually be whittled down. On the upside, the cooldown of the traps is cleverly shown on the model in some cases. Now you can heal or resupply your ammo in a level to a limited extent, but these areas are so far away from a good defensive position that you feel punished for using them, either with a loss in free resources between waves because you took too long, a loss of building time by activating the next wave early and having to run, or just having to let through a few enemies to the exit just to use these health and ammo regens. There is no good solution it feels and there is no avoiding damage either. You have to engage because the traps are just never enough and this eventually leads to you just getting whittled down. Part of this is not helped by the fact that the gunplay feels very weak. 
It's not just the shots themselves that are weak, but there is no aim down sights, erratic movement of nearly every creature throws your aim, and if you don't shoot, they just follow a standard predictable path. So it's not just my aim. The guns feel like they don't have an impact and reloading just takes far too long. All of the traps and weapons do have a cool research tree to them where you can upgrade and gain various stats and building discounts. And I think these are pretty meaningful and effective upgrades. But since it seems none of this carries over between runs, and I found it hard to make any progress at all. So instead of a roguelike, I got a rogue none. Overall, I really wanted to love this type of game. I love shooters. I love tower defense, and I love the sci-fi setting. It's basically orcs must die but on a spaceship. This game should have been a home run for me, but I haven't swore so much at a game in years, and I've played Helldivers 2 on Helldive difficulty. I just couldn't find the fun. Now before we finish, I'd like to touch on some other points. The game has clearly been designed for multiplayer play for one, and this would change the dynamic of the game completely even if the difficulty is scaled with more players. And it's a huge disservice to the game to launch without it. Another thing that bothered me was forcing a loss on the player. You will get encounters with multiple warding parties, but you can only defend one area at a time. So you have to pick an area to sacrifice pretty much. Now while this can be rebuilt at a large cost, it just felt like a kick in the teeth to have this forced on me. Also, and thankfully, this is only an early access launch, and there will be time to fix a lot of things, add new features and content, and take feedback on board during this period, which will lead to a better game in the end. And to this end, the devs have also released a roadmap, which I'll also link in the description for you. So if you still like the look of this and do want to give it a try, awesome! It's well priced for what it is, I had no crashes while running the game, and it is currently running a launch discount. So jump on down to the description where there is, of course, a link to the game Steam page. So like and subscribe for more sci-fi gaming content, and I'll see you in the next one. Kenator, out.